Now the glass is uh, a very interesting story behind the glass and the scope. It's uh, usually Zeiss says in their literature that it's FL, and uh, you know when you say, "Hey, what does FL mean?" Sometimes they say fluoride and stuff like that. Um, nobody ever really knows what goes into these scopes because the manufacturers never actually publish what they use. But it's safe to say that they most likely, and this is kind of a rumor that I confirmed with uh, another uh, uh, guy that I know that is, uh, you know, kind of in the in the optics industry. We both think that this is probably the only rifle scope in history to use an actual piece of fluorite glass. And that's something that is difficult to explain because fluorite is, uh, you know, it's, it's called CAF2 uh, is the actual uh, chemical name. And it is uh, considered to have the highest Abbey number which is a fancy way of saying that it has the, the least amount of chromatic aberration possible. It transmits, uh, you know, light without any dispersion. And it, uh, it, it's, it's an interesting technical thing. It really doesn't mean anything, honestly, practically. But there, is a, 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 there are more than a few rumors that of all the scopes out there, this is the one that received a fluorite element. Most of the time when we're talking about optics and we're talking about uh, fluoride, uh, not fluorite, I-T-E and I-D-E, they're two different things. Fluoride glass is usually uh, technically referred to as fluorocrown glass, and that's what most uh, rifle scopes probably use nowadays. That's probably what manufacturers are, are alluding to when they say ED. And fluorite is just not a very practical material for a, uh, a rifle scope. Um, it's considered to be very brittle, it's very soft, it's very expensive to work with, it's very difficult to manufacture, it uh, is toxic. I mean, there's just all kinds of things that would lead uh, people to believe that, uh, you know, rifle scopes really don't benefit from fluorite glass, CAF2 glass. But it's just an interesting kind of note that there is a, a lot of people who believe that at least one element in this, uh, in this scope, in the 72 millimeter scopes, received a fluorite element. So just to talk a little bit about the, um, uh, the history of this scope, which is very, very interesting. When I first bought this scope back in about 2010, uh, that's when Zeiss originally owned, the, owned Hensoldt, um, I, was, uh, I was confused. I thought maybe they were going in a new direction, that all scopes would become kind of like spotting scopes that were just mounted to... <laughs> you know, a rifle, you know, that they were going to go for just uh, larger and larger objectives, you know. I thought, oh, Hensel Zeiss is going to come out with a 72 millimeter. Schmidt will come out with a 72 millimeter. Night Force will come out with a 72 millimeter. I thought that that was what was happening, and that never happened. And the, the reason for that, there are a couple of very interesting historical and practical reasons. On the historical side... This scope was developed as part of a line that uh, included all the other scopes in the line were 56 millimeter objectives. They had a 3 to 12, a 4 to 16, and a 6 to 24 all available in 56 millimeter. Now the other scope that they had in the line, uh, which was developed for a German military contract, was the remarkable 6 to 24 by 72 millimeter. Uh, SAM and the SAM is a uh, it was a really really a, a amazing piece of optical history now uh, especially looking back on it comparing it to what what's available today uh, SAM stands for sniper automated module and it was one of the first electronic heads-up display rifle scopes if you're familiar with new scopes like the Revic or the Steiner, you know, the Steiner's coming out with a new one. They have these electronic heads-up displays. Well, that's what the SAM was, but that was like 15 years ago. 
and uh, you know it had sensors inside of its base and it uh, had a ballistics calculator and a very interesting scope probably takes the cake as the most expensive rifle scope ever made it cost twelve thousand dollars <laughs> nuts I, I don't know anybody who bought one and you know the electronic stuff wasn't really well received let's put it in the uh, in the in the tactical world so it 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 was kind of a you know a unicorn it's a unicorn scope and uh the story that i heard that really made a lot of sense to me i don't know if it's true it's just speculation but uh Zeiss never set out to develop a 72 millimeter objective scope what happened was is that they were developing the SAM system which uses a series of extra lenses and a bunch of electronic wizardry that really sucked up a lot of light. So if they put their SAM prototype uh, into the, the optical assembly into a 56 millimeter scope, they noticed that, especially if you compared it to a similar 56 millimeter scope that uh, didn't have that system in there, that you lost a massive amount of light, like 20%. It was just really dark. So the engineers were forced to go to a 72 millimeter objective in order to um, justify the extra level of, uh, you know, uh, the, the reduced light transmission of the SAM system. And then some brilliant engineer or marketing guy or who knows looked at the scope and said, looked at the SAM and said, what if we just removed all the electronics from the scope and sold it just as a you know seventy two millimeter objective scope without any electronics? Wouldn't that be cool? And uh, you know we could market it as a low light scope, the 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 best passive night vision in the world, and that's exactly what happened, and that's how this scope kind of entered into the marketplace. And it's known, uh, you know, in the military world as being kind of that passive night vision champion. So it's a uh, it's a very interesting story. Obviously, it's uh, it's not very suited to tactical shooting today because of a lot of the issues with the turrets and stuff like that. But I happen to think it's a, a fantastic ELR scope, and that's what I shoot it for. That's what I sh that's what I use it. So one of the issues that uh, I, I get with uh, a lot of people who are interested in Hensolt op Optics is, oh, uh, what's the deal with the company? Well, the company has dealt with a lot of change in the last 10 years, but in a very weird way, it's really not that big of a deal. And I'll explain it in terms of uh, Hensolt's history. So Hensolt is one of the oldest optics manufacturers military optics manufacturers, rifle scope manufacturers in the world. Um, it goes back to like the mid-19th century. And in 1928, Zeiss bought them and essentially turned Hensolt into uh, their military line. And they produced all kinds of scopes. I mean, if you've ever shot a G3, you've probably come into contact with the really famous uh, ZF-24 which was a fantastic scope made for the German military for the G3 rifles. Um, they continued to make all kinds of really fancy military optics, including a lot of scopes that nobody's ever really heard about in the United States throughout the you know, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. And then what happened was in 2010, 2011-ish, they were, Zeiss decided to sell uh, Hensoldt and uh, concentrate on sport optics. Um, and they were bought by a uh, company called uh, Cassadian, which is a defense contractor. In 2011, they spent a couple of years kind of configured like that. Uh, the defense contractor tended to lump them together with a bunch of other companies that also produced really high-tech military optics, things for like surveillance and tanks and all kinds of crazy stuff satellites lasers and then in some i think around 2016 2017 airbus bought uh hensolt 
And then finally, it was sold to an American defense contracting group or kind of an investment group called KRR very recently in the last couple of years. So people have said, oh, you know, there's all kind of, oh, it's not Zeiss anymore. Oh, you know, <laughs> this is the usual kind of like talk, Internet talk about how, oh, a company has changed hands. It's it's different now. But in reality, what I can tell you is that Hensolt really hasn't changed at all. And if you do your research, um, Hensolt is still in Wetzlar. The scope is 100% made in Wetzlar. And uh, it's still in the same building as Zeiss Sport Optics is. They haven't changed at all. And if you look at the box and the, uh, the excellent manual documentation that this thing comes with... It's exactly, I remember it from when I bought it 10 years ago, it was exactly the same. In, in, in fact, the only thing that has changed is the fact that, you know, they revamped this Hensolt logo. Now it's got the more modern Hensolt logo on it. And if you flip the scope over, it says Hensolt Optronics GmbH, made in Germany. So... Uh, I remember on my scope, the Zeiss scope that I had, or the one that was made during its Zeiss ownership, it had a Zeiss logo here. And it comes with a set of uh, really awful bikini covers um, that used to say Zeiss on the front of the bag. Now it's just, it doesn't have anything. But the box is the same, all the accessories that it comes with. It basically just comes with the uh, bikini covers. And... Uh, uh, it, it's all basically the same. And Hensel, the company, is most likely exactly the same, guys. I mean, there's no there's no actual reason to believe that, you know, they changed hands and everything changed. It's probably the same people are involved. It's still made using Zeiss uh, shot glass. You know, it, 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 much ado about nothing. Typically, German companies... When they trade hands and they're this old and they're this established and they have such an, a good product line, nothing changes. And their customer service has been very good. Um, and, you know, you don't have to worry uh, about the, the different, you know, names that have been kind of associated with it. One thing that is difficult to understand now is that Hensold is like a really large company compared to the original uh, just Vetzler based uh, uh, rifle scope manufacturer. It's now, you know, it's got like 4,000 employees worldwide and a bunch of different headquarters scattered all over the world. It's really a global company and they have many different divisions. But those are all made up, all those big divisions that make like lasers and stuff like that for satellites. Those are, that is a, a, a essentially a company that was added to the Hensolt company name uh, so to speak and uh they used the name Hensolt to kind of you know uh, uh market their their products uh and it's uh it, it, it's all fairly easy to understand if you think about it in terms of the actual rifle scope division that is in Vetzler is the same company in the same place and producing the same product so you don't you don't have to worry about any of the uh the other issues or speculation. So Zeiss made a version of this scope um, back uh, in the day, um, and they continued to make it for a few years, even after Hensolt was kind of split off from Zeiss. Uh, it was also a 72 millimeter version. It had different turrets. Um, it was uh, a little uh, a little different in its configuration. It had different um, lens coatings. Uh, they used something called Lodutech, which was Zeiss's kind of sport optic or hunting type lens coatings. And compared to the Hensel, you know, the Hensel is really just the militarized version. It's uh, It's got different turrets. The uh, the Zeiss had, uh, in some cases, had a capped windage turret, and uh, it had kind of old school adjustments. I think it was only available in MOA, if I remember correctly, and it had, uh, you know, various different reticles that were also offered in the second focal plane, uh, including just like a straight up duplex reticle. And uh, those versions um, also had a 34 millimeter tube. They 
they didn't have quite the level of uh, coatings that the Hensoldt has. The Hensoldt has got a very neutral color cast, uh, very, very beautifully done. Uh, I've never looked through the Zeiss version, but the Zeiss version was said to have a little bit more of like kind of a color pop. It was meant more for uh, hunting, so it accentuated kind of like greens and blues a little bit more. And uh, that scope uh, was actually probably uh, much more financially successful or, or sold way better than the Hensoldt did. Um, and uh, a lot of people, I know a guy here in California that bought one who's a hunter, and uh, he bought it for, you know, the the reason that a lot of hunters did. It's a, it's a great low-light scope, and here in California we can't uh, mount night vision to our rifles legally, so that was a great way for him to be able to, uh, you know, uh, go hunting in the, in the dusk. Another very interesting thing about this scope is that, um, so Hensel had, uh, in their first generation version of this scope, they had a 3-12, to a 4-16, and a 6-24, to in 56 millimeter, and then they had the 72 millimeter version, both the SAM version and this, you know, regular non electronic 72 millimeter version. What they did was a couple of years later is come out with the uh, very uh, highly lauded uh, 3 to 5 to 26 scope, which is a, another very, very expensive rifle scope. It sells for, I don't know, like seven grand. And uh, I know some people who have run that scope, they really like it. It has some of the best turrets ever made. It has a really cool dual turn system that you snap in and out uh, to be able to go from the first to the second rev. Well, what Hensel did, uh, I guess they came out with that scope in about 2012, uh, maybe half a year later, they came back and they took the 4 to 16 version of the older. The, the first generation line, and they updated it with those same turrets and gave it a front focal plane reticle. So if they were to come back and do that to this 72 millimeter version, then that's a game changer because then the scope could maybe actually be used for, you know, kind of modern competition type tactical shooting with those excellent updated turrets with the zero stop and, uh, you know, the... Uh, the front focal plane reticle and that scope was also made available with you know a bunch of different reticles some horus reticles so it, it, it i wish hensel would take the 72 millimeter version do the same treatment that they did to the 4 to 16 version i think that would uh, generally help this scope uh, you know, b b become more relevant in the marketplace because right now it's basically just, uh, you know, I see it as an ELR kind of target scope.